tribe, welcome to Howling After Dark. Okay, got a pretty cool show tonight, uh, but I, I feel like I need to explain a little backstory here. Uh, tonight's show is happening because a uh, old friend of mine from Palace, uh, for those that don't know what Palace is, it's a... Uh, is really like kind of one of the first uh, visual chat servers uh, before they had all the the fancy shit that they have now. Um, anyways, a uh, uh, old friend of mine knows that I'm you know uh, paranormal investigator and into all this stuff. Uh, contacted me tonight and asked me a question. And that question was, uh, what to do if you see a ghost, and how do you get rid of it? Now, there is a way to do that, and I, I will explain that in detail, but, but first, I want to iterate a point. Fear... Nothing but a closed mind. This is one of my favorite quotes. It's kind of an obscure quote. Uh, it was said... by Albert Einstein, uh, originally. But it was actually made kind of famous by... Professor Hans Holzer. And for those that don't know who Hans Holzer is, he, he was like the original Ghostbuster. He he was doing this stuff before the Warrens. He was doing this stuff um, before Dr. Barry Taft, even. Uh, he was like the big name in the paranormal field. And... Uh, Anyways, I digress. So, uh, and I'll get more into that later. Uh, so what I advised her is that, uh, if the spirit is, is truly being, you know, troublesome, uh, the way you get it to stop is you have to do what, uh, okay, I'm, I'm starting this wrong. So, uh, allow me first to explain to any new listeners out there that I've been a paranormal investigator and a practicing Blackfoot medicine man for 30 years. And what I mean by practicing Blackfoot medicine man is I do uh, the real sage ritual um, which in entails uh, prayers in my native language and to us sage is like holy water is to Catholics it only works when you truly believe in it so uh, like all these people you see using them on TV shows and, and shit these because that's what it's feeding on is your fear or your whatever. I would say anger, but that's not exactly accurate. People think that anger is a negative emotion, and it certainly can be. But like with a lot of things, it's all in the intent. There is such a thing as righteous anger, uh, which is uh, actually good. But I've been to every place you can think of, pretty much. I mean, there's a few that I would really love to go to. I would love to make it to Hillview Manor, for example. Never been there. And I haven't been to, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. It's an old 
Asylum in upstate New York that Ghost Adventures did in like one of their first seasons where they they caught the apparition of this guy that was like seven feet tall. But, uh, yeah, like, those places I haven't been to yet, but you think about the big ones, like, uh, for example, Winchester Mystery House. And I'll get into my visit there in a second, because that was, that was early on in my career, before I knew everything that I knew now. Like, like the whole, uh, fear is a weapon thing, for example. Uh, so I'll get, I'll get into that. I've been to Preston Castle, Man- uh, Mansfield Reformatory. That's not too far from where I live right now. I've been there. Um, you know, I, I've been to all the, the, the big, like, televised places, really. Um. Bobby Mackey's been there once before they started charging an arm and a leg together. Um, and I, I've, I've been to places uh, all around the world, really. You know, and that's, that's like the key thing that I learned. And I... See, the thing is, is I didn't have someone like me to tell me what I'm telling you. You understand? Like, I didn't have a me to tell me, hey, don't be afraid of this shit, it'll use it against you. You know, find, find your, your, your courage. You know? I didn't have somebody to tell me that. So, I had to learn all this stuff. And when, <laughs> when I... I had done some investigations before. I went to uh, the Winchester Mansion. Uh, mainly in San Diego. Um, like, I'd been to the Whaley House, which... I will say that, for the record... It is definitely deserving of the accolade of most haunted house in America. But I don't think it's the most. I think it's in like the top three, and I'll get into that later. Uh, I've I investigated the Star of India like what twenty some odd years before Ghost Adventures even knew that it existed. Okay. I, I, so I, I had both of those under my belt before I went to Winchester House. But what happened, I was not prepared for, and my fear got the better of me. I know that. See, I know it now. I would, I wouldn't have accepted that in my younger days, at all. I just would have felt fear, and it would have bit me, so to speak. So this is what happened, right? So uh, before it had really um, been a thing where you can. Uh, like, pay money to go ghost hunt someplace. You know, before the shows, like, Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures and all that. Uh, even before uh, the British show, Most Haunted, which uh, some may or may not know, was actually the first paranormal-themed, like, TV show. Um, before all of that, I went to the Winchester Mint mystery house, the the mansion, and this is what happened, right, so, uh, they had contacted my, my, my first group, and, in San Diego, 
and they wanted somebody to come to the Winchester mansion and investigate um, because they were trying to either prove or disprove that it was haunted um, because uh, of the potential buyer of the place at the time wanted to know and wanted to know if they needed some kind of special insurance and <coughs> excuse me all this weird shit that uh, is no longer even a factor but like because it was like the early days of all this stuff it was a concern you know so uh, and keep in mind this is also before the the law uh which some may not be aware of, there, there's actually a law in the books where uh, a realtor has to disclose all that information, uh, whether or not somebody has died in the home and whether or not it's actually had some kind of paranormal activity. They have to actually disclose that now by law. Uh, anyways, so... Uh, it all had to do with that, and it was like the early days of all of this coming. And uh, anyways, so they they said, uh, well, we can't make it because of a prior engagement, but we just so happen to have an investigator that, that's out in your, your direction, and would you like them to come right now? And they were like, yeah, sure, set it up. And so they called me, and... I got on the fucking road and I went to the Winchester Mystery House and I didn't know what to expect. I didn't honestly know all that much about it. I knew there was some kind of, of connection to uh, Winchester Rifles, but I didn't really know a lot about it. I didn't even know the name Sarah Winchester at that time. So... Uh, when you, I, I think it's been rearranged somewhat, uh, but uh, when you first go in, you're kind of like in this big foyer type thing, and along one wall of this foyer was a really tall bookshelf, which I think since it's been moved, uh, but don't quote me. Anyway, so I walked in. And immediately, the second I crossed that threshold, books were flying off of those shelves. A couple of them almost hit me. Whatever it was, and it wasn't Sarah Winchester, it was something else. But whatever it was, was having a very adverse reaction to me being there. And I know it was me specifically because after... I, because I didn't go any further into the house. I turned around and walked right back out the door. I said, nope, sorry, can't help you. You know, and I, I will forever regret that because I, I wish I would have, would have, uh, not been afraid at that point and had actually stuck with it and found out what was going on because, you know, maybe, just maybe, things would have turned out differently. Maybe it would be me with the TV show instead of Ghost Hunters or whoever. You know what I mean? I, not that that's necessarily all I want out of life, but and not that I'm unhappy with my life now or with how things are going because well, I'll get into that later, too. So, uh, anyways, I, I did. I let my fear affect me. And I missed out on something potentially kind of beautiful in the end. And, and I often often think back on that because of just the sheer magnitude of that place. And, and the, uh, the way it was built, the architecture of it. 
that that is so you know seemingly uh insane but it's insane in kind of this beautiful way that uh sort of makes sense you know when you factor in like like that she was afraid she was being followed by ghosts that wanted revenge etc cetera, etc cetera. um so I wish I, I I still I wish I would have was stuck with it, but then again, you know maybe maybe I had to learn that lesson that way because and and this is actually how I learned it by the way the very next case we had was this. Uh, It was a place I had actually been to, uh, like, before, a couple years before with a friend of mine. It's called Cemetery Park. It's in San Diego. And uh, it's actually a park, you know, with swings and slides and, and a playground built right on top of a cemetery where there are still grave markers. And so it it is very much active, particularly at night. And I don't think that's that's indicative of you know something bad going on. I, I think it's simply that the spirits in question don't want to bother the children. You know, because uh, I mean, if I were, you know in their shoes on the other side I wouldn't want to bother a kid either like like I I think I would think about that before you know doing anything anyways so uh we we did that investigation and there was stuff going on that uh normally would have freaked me out I would have immediately thought there's something dark here, there's something negative here, we need to get out, we need to get away, you know, etc., etc. But for whatever reason, I just... I like to thank my grandfather in a way. Um, because he taught me how, how to look inward and, and find, like, my inner, peer, inner peace. And so that's what I did, I, I guess... Uh, you know, for whatever reason, I didn't react the same way as I did with the Winchester house. I just uh, found that inner peace, and I was like, oh, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid at all. There, there's nothing bad here. This is my immediate reaction. And uh, that's when it first dawned on me that fear is a weapon you know and, and it was that fact was uh, solidified with me just a short time later when I did my first cleansing case which uh, ironically happened because I was contacted by a Catholic priest. Almost never happens, by the way, because the Catholics seem to think they can handle everything, but not necessarily the case. And the reason why is spirits, all spirits, whether you're talking ghosts or or demons, angels, whatever. All spirits are like us. Right? Meaning that they stem from different faiths, different belief systems, different cultures, just like we do. Right? So if you're talking to, let's say, a Native American entity that is not exactly good, your holy water and reading from the Bible isn't going to do shit. 
because it has no respect for that. And it doesn't have to, because that's the rules. See, the universe has rules, and when you're, you're able to see them and see how they behave, you can kind of figure that out. So, uh, anyways, it, this priest was, was of the opinion, yeah, I've tried everything I can try. Uh, I think what you're dealing with here is a Native American spirit, and you need a Native American to come deal with it. And so they called me. I went out there. I did uh, the sage ritual, which I will repeat right now on the air for you. This is exactly how it goes, right? I light my sage while it while it's smoking. I have a wafting feather that I waft the smoke around my environment with. I'm not just wafting the smoke, right? I, I'm I'm basically cleansing everything negative out of that environment, right? And I say this prayer. Uniqua, creator of all worlds, grant us your blessings and protect us from evil. And I say that over and over and over and over. Every step I take, I say that exact thing. All the way through the house, every room. Now here's the important part. You can't just put sage smoke in the environment that will work for a little bit. But you have to actually believe in what you're using. Absolutely. Case in point, even a Catholic priest, if they do not have absolute faith in that holy water, guess what? It doesn't work. Because the faith behind that substance that cleansing substance has to be absolute. And I have absolute faith in sage smoke. But I also know exactly how to use it. Alright? So, that's step one. Step two is, uh, at least in our culture, you can't just use the smoke. That'll get rid of it for a little while, but it can eventually come back in. So what you have to do is you have to seal the environment with salt. The purest salt you can find is the best. I highly recommend sea salt. So what I mean by sealing it is you make a line of salt across every window seal and across every doorway and you leave one doorway unsalted while you're doing the smoke and if there is an evil entity in the house you use the smoke and you literally push it out of the house and then you seal the last doorway behind it so it can't come back in and you leave the salt there you don't wipe it away you leave it there because eventually salt dissipates Okay, it just with normal traffic and and wind and whatnot, it will eventually fade away. But the the residue will always be there, and that's what you want. So basically, what it does is it seals the environment, so nothing uh, of an evil bent, nothing negative can cross into that environment. Which, once again, only works if you absolutely believe in it. See, that's the key to everything. If your faith, in whatever it is, you could even be an atheist and and believe in whatever you believe or don't believe, as long as it's absolute, that will be the truth for you, 
and that truth will always conquer. Right? You could be, you could be native. You could be Buddhist. You could be Wiccan. That doesn't matter. Whatever it is, if you have absolute faith in it, it will work. But if you are using something that's not of your faith, and you don't absolutely believe in it, it will either flat out just not work at all, or it can blow up in your face. Case in point, I saw this YouTube video a while back, and I don't remember the the like the user handle or, or or the woman's name or what have you, but she was a self proclaimed psychic. Which, if you were to see this video, I don't think you would buy any more than I did. Uh, not to say there aren't real psychics out there. I am an example of a real real deal. I'm clairvoyant, as some of my listeners know. My long-time listeners definitely know. I see spirits, not just ghosts. I see spirits, period. Um, and have since I was five years old. And I'm now 51. So, I'll let you do the math. In any case... Uh, And uh, the the bonus of having that absolute faith, whatever it is, is when you have that to lean on, you feel no fear. Which is the second part of the equation of why this stuff works for those that absolutely believe. Because they absolutely believe and they feel no fear. Because they know. They know. It's not It's not a matter of, oh, well, maybe this will work. No. This is going to work. It will work every single time that I do it because I believe it. And I'm not going to get into the whole this belief or that belief thing because it doesn't really matter but I have seen people that have healed themselves literally healed themselves from potentially in fact I'm one of those people from potentially life altering injuries because they believed it I'll give give my story as an example right so, when I was a kid, um, I, I don't really remember how old I was. I know I was younger than 12. I believe I was like 7 or 8. And my mom took me to her church. I'm not going to get into that whole bullshit either. Whatever she believes is whatever she believes, and I'm not going to falter for it. But I just don't share the same beliefs, that's all. And no matter how much she tries, uh, you know, bless her, but uh, we just don't agree on that. Let's just say that. But anyways, I was a kid at the time, so it was really not my choice. Anyways, uh, they were having some kind of church going deal I like an event or whatever uh, all I remember is we were downstairs in this basement the church by the way was like a, a bowling alley that was converted into a church and it had this kind of weird basement actually no it was before they moved in into the old bowling alley it was like it was a church like a church church but it had this basement, and like there was like a cafeteria type thing down there, and uh, people were down there, you know, eating, conversing, yada yada yada, and there was this woman. I guess she had some kind of anger or mental issues or, or something. Um, 
but you know, kids being kids, they they say things. They don't have a filter at that age. I certainly didn't. And I was talking to this lady, and she said something like, "Oh, you're so cute. Look at those chubby cheeks." And I looked at her and said, "Well, you're fat." You know, not knowing that that was a bad thing to say. But this lady lost it. And she hit me so hard that I flew and landed on top of these, uh, like, folded metal chairs. Like the kind you would see in wrestling matches hitting people. Like those kind of chairs, like folded up so that they're, you know, like lean, leaning against this uh, this post. So they're upright. So I landed on top of the chairs. And, you know, she w- was immediately apologetic. And, you know, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't really remember much of what happened after that. Um, not because I, I had a head injury or anything, just because, uh, I don't know, I, I either blocked it out or it, it left to make space for other memories or whatever. And not really important. But this is the important part. So, uh, we didn't know it then, but uh, fast forward to a couple of years later, like around the age of 11 or 12. And we find out that I have a spinal injury. Now, I was told that I need to pray to God every day for for healing, right? Because, you know, mom's Christian, and that's what they believe. And I, whatever. Not important. This is not exactly what I did, though. What I did was... Multiple times a day, every single day... I would tell myself, there is no pain, my back is fine. There is no pain, my back is fine. There is no pain, my back is fine. Over and over and over again. And it became such a a mantra, I guess you could say, to me, such a chant in my own head, that eventually what happened is I believed it to the extent that my spine healed itself. Because absolute faith, my friends, no matter what that faith is in, is absolute power. And you can do anything when you truly believe. Alright, my pack, my tribe, that is about all the time I have. Until next time, peace out.